project. I was making a bandsaw box here and I messed up. This was supposed to be the tray going in and out so I kind of cut that and made it a bandsaw box that has a lid that fits but I like the grain so much I'm real happy with the way it turned out. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take the scrap from the center of this bandsaw box and I'm going to try to make another type of bandsaw box that you may not have seen recently. Let's take a look at how it's done. The first thing I need to do is make a pattern and this is going to be a heart shape so I have a piece of folded paper here and I want to use as much of this wood up as possible so my heart will probably go something like this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fold that and sometimes I have to do this several times to get the shape I want. And you can see my line isn't very straight but my scissors can straighten that mess out in a second here. We'll see how this looks. That's about what I want. Now I'm going to apply some of this school glue and it works pretty good for stuff like this. It's not too hard to get off later. The next thing I want to do is mark a hole that I'm going to drill right here, right on the center line, about a half an inch up. I'm going to go ahead and mark that with this spring-loaded punch. And I'm going to plan to drill with a quarter inch Forstner bit. I'm going to go as deep as I can go and it's going to be right there. I want to get halfway through this bottom piece. Okay, so keep that in mind. Halfway through the bottom piece set your drill to stop before you punch out the other side. I started drilling my hole with a Forstner bit, but it just couldn't clear the waste wood, so I'm going to use this twist high-speed drill bit and go down. I have my depth already set, and you can see I'm using a metal holding uh, vise, but it'll work for this just as well. Can you hear those birds in the background? They're just going crazy today, and I love it because when birds are making a lot of noise, they're healthy, and the world is good. Okay, here we go. I'm going to cut out the heart shape now, and since I have very little waste wood right here, I'm going to make a single cut here and come out, and then I'm going to make a secondary cut here and in here to the V, and then this final cut. Here we go. Now I'm going to use my paper pattern to kind of clean up this little area here and take any waves away that the bandsaw blade made with my belt disc sander. Notice how I have this clamp. There's a lot of different ways to clamp these. I used to cut out a heart-shaped space in a wood, piece of wood and drop it in there and that would hold it pretty well. But here I have a large C-clamp, a two, couple of hold fasts. I've got it in there good and tight. I'm going to take this trim router and go around the top and the top is the part that doesn't have the hole. And I'm going to do that in two swipes. And here we go. Well, that does a nice job. This little guy, $29, 20% off at Harbor Freight, $24.99, and it does a great job for what I need.
The next step is you need to sand all surfaces. Uh, you can do this by hand, but I have an orbital sander I'd rather use. And I've locked it here tight inside of my wooden clamp. If you want to make one of these, take a look at another one of my videos. They're fairly simple to make. So I'm going to go ahead and sand this. You don't need to watch me sand. Now that I have this heart shape all sanded really nicely, I'm going to cut what will be the lid off. Notice I set it up so I'm going to come a little bit into the beech wood because the zebra wood tends to chip a little bit from this bandsaw blade. So I'm going to rip that right off now. Take a close look at this setup. I have a large Forstner bit here and I have it set to go all the way down to the zebra wood so it's going to go through this beech wood right here. I'm going to go up and down to clear the sawdust as I go through it and notice I use the scrap of this heart on both sides to pinch it in and hold it good and tight. I finished drilling my large hole. Now what I'm going to do is take a quarter inch dowel and I'm going to cut it a little bit longer than the distance I need to go all the way through here. I can go back and just sand it because I want its diameter to be reduced slightly until I can put it in this hole and have it spin easily around. Okay, and you can see I'm a little ways off from that yet. Now I'm going to take and put a tiny drop of wood glue into this hole. And press the dowel into that. And then, in case the dowel has an odd angle on it, I'm going to go ahead and run it through here and press it down good and tight. And then this extra I will cut off with a saw blade and then finally sand down with my belt disc sander to flush it up. Well here's my end product and I'm real happy with the way it turned out. I think more so because this was a fail. I did it incorrectly and when I made this box, although I like the way it turned out, uh, when I made this box, I had a big piece of waste material in the middle. So what was nice is I was able to take that waste material and make it into a second little jewelry box. And I'll show you how this one works. You can go like that, slide it open, and you can see there's the opening where you can drop some pierced ear rings or rings into and just wheel it shut. And it's kind of a matching set now. I hope you enjoyed this film and maybe give one of these a try.